Today I'm talking about mini tripods because I have many, many tripods. And I wanted to go over a few of them that I own and that are fairly popular so that you can see how I use them, what equipment I use with them, what I think their strengths and weaknesses are, what attributes I like to have in most of my tripods, mini or otherwise. And hopefully some of this information can help you if you're looking for a mini or many, many tripods like me because I have a bunch of them. So let's go over what I've got here. Now, most of these aren't the tiniest or lightest of tripods because I tend to need something that can hold at least a full frame mirrorless camera like my Sony a7 III or Sony a7 IV with a small lens like the Tamron 17 28 And most of these can do that or are at least roughly the same size or in the same size category. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the Manfrotto Pixie tripod, the Small Rig Mini tripod, the Ulanzi MT-16, the Ulanzi MT-22 or MT-24, it's labeled as one thing online and differently on the tripod itself. And it was actually labeled Pictron when I bought it on Amazon. But as you can see, it says Ulanzi right there and it says Ulanzi MT-22 directly on the tripod. So I'll refer to this one as either the MT-22 or the MT-24. And this little semi-custom tripod that I pieced together with different parts from different brands. So this one isn't actually a single item that you can buy outright. So I'll go over this one last. All right, so we'll start with the Manfrotto Pixie tripod. Overall, the Manfrotto Pixie tripod is a good first mini tripod. It stands about five and a quarter inches tall and has about an eight inch diameter footprint leg to leg. Its leg span is fixed. There are no lower or taller settings to get it ultra close to the surface or any taller than that five and a quarter inches. It's $25, not a terrible price, and from a trusted company like Manfrotto. It's lightweight, but that's because it's mostly all fairly heavy plastic, but the ball head itself and the bolt on top are metal, as is all of the screws that uh, hold everything together. The legs fold out easily and stay in place, and the legs have not really ever gotten terribly loose on me, so they generally stay where you put them. The ball head feels nice and you adjust the ball head in any direction with the push and hold of the button on the side. So as long as you're holding it, you can move the ball head and it's spring loaded. So as soon as you release it, it tightens back up and the ball head basically stops and stays in place. It has a quarter 20 bolt right on top to mount your equipment. It's very simple and I like that. The ball head is not removable, it's fixed. So it's just part of the tripod as a whole. The cons of the Manfrotto Pixie are that since the ball head does actually work by loosening the tension with that button, that means you can't lock down the ball head any tighter if you needed to. And the tension isn't really strong enough for heavier items. So if you put an item on here that has an asymmetrical balance point, like a mirrorless camera with a heavy lens out front, even if the tripod stays upright, the weight of something heavy out front can overcome the force of the spring tension on the ball head and the ball head can slowly slip down and move or even fall. So I just keep lightweight items on the Manfrotto Pixie tripod like microphones or other small video monitors. I really don't use my larger Sony cameras on the Pixie. And I've actually had to take the Pixie apart and tighten it because I did have the ball head get loose on me over time, even when the button wasn't depressed. And the bad part is that you have to remove the bottom plate and that bottom plate is held in by star bit screws. So you need a six point star bit wrench to remove those screws. Then the remaining screws inside are also star bit. And even though you can tighten up the screws inside to give it more tension, it's all mostly plastic other than the screws themselves and the spring. So watch out how much you tighten it down so you don't break the plastic housing but making those adjustments did help the ball head get tightened back up. And again, for most lightweight things, the ball head tension is just fine. So for on-camera style microphones like the Movo VXR10 or even my Rode VideoMic NTG, it's great. It's easy to just grab and throw something on and get going. It doesn't come with any Arca Swiss or other quick release mounting clamp and plate system. So if you want that, you'll have to add your own. And that, of course, will make the top of the tripod a bit larger as it would on any tripod that you add an Arca Swiss clamp to. Not a bad first choice for a mini tripod, but if you need to put your mirrorless camera like a Sony a7 IV or similar camera on top of something, I wouldn't go with the Pixie. I'd probably go with my next mini tripod, which is the Small Rig Mini Tripod. The Small Rig Mini Tripod is a much heavier and more sturdy tripod, despite not being that much larger than the Manfrotto Pixie. 
The small rig mini tripod has longer legs and those legs spread a lot wider and measure about 11 inches leg to leg, which gives this tripod a much lower center of gravity, but a larger footprint. But that also means the small rig tripod can certainly handle larger items like a mirrorless camera with a decent sized lens, like this Sony a7 III with a Tamron 2080-75 f2.8 lens because this tripod won't tip over with that lower center of gravity. The tripod sits about four inches tall and that's about as tall as you can safely go because the legs do not lock in any other position, which means they just spread out until they bottom out. So this tripod just always sits low. The small rig is pretty much all metal and all of the leg joints have a hex head bolt where you can tighten up the legs when they get loose because generally they will get a bit loose over time. But of course, with those lower angle legs and lower center of gravity, that means you can't get much height out of this tripod. You can see here that the Manfrotto Pixie stands a couple of inches taller than the small rig mini tripod. And with that wider leg span, the small rig mini tripod needs more flat surface area to be stable. The small rig mini tripod comes with a larger ball head, which is of course fully articulating with a main wing nut. And I love that this ball head has wing nut style knobs instead of just round knobs because you can get more leverage on the wing nut style and lock them down really well. The ball head also has a pan only adjustment and function with the second wing nut. So you can set your angle with the ball head, lock it down. And if you need to pan left or right, loosen the lower wing nut and then pan or spin whatever you have on top of the tripod. And having a pan only mode is something that I really want on almost all of my ball heads because I always find that I'm needing to just turn the object like maybe a camera or a monitor to, I don't know, maybe get to one of the inputs or outputs on the back. If your ball head only has a single adjustment knob that loosens the entire ball head, then you'll always have to just hold your equipment up with one hand while loosening and adjusting the equipment. So it becomes a two handed operation. Having a pan only function means that you can make those panning adjustments or just spin the equipment around with a single hand without having to grab and hold the equipment with your other hand. And the ball head on the small rig mini tripod is an Arca Swiss clamp style and it comes with an Arca Swiss plate as well that you can attach to your equipment. The plate has horizontal retention screws on the bottom so it won't fall horizontally out of the clamp if you don't completely lock the clamp down. Since the ball head only has that Arca Swiss plate and clamp, it means there is no quarter inch bolt directly on top of the ball head, unlike something like the Manfrotto Pixie that has a bolt right there. You can just attach something directly to the Pixie, like a small light. But on the small rig tripod, you have to use something like an Arca Swiss plate to fit it into the clamp as is. But I have and use Arca Swiss plates on almost all of my gear, so it works well for me. You could of course adapt that 3 8 bolt to a quarter 20 if you needed to and mount it on anything else that has a quarter 20 already on it, like this small LED light. But of course you would lose out on the functionality of the ball head by just mounting the feet to something. You would uh, just have a flat object at that point, but at least you have the option of changing the ball head or mounting these feet to something else with that 3 8 bolt. Overall, the small rig mini tripod has worked very well for me. There are times I don't like the wider base when I do need to get it into small areas, but it's really stable and it does come in at a higher price tag of about $45 to $50 most of the time. All right, next up, the Ulanzi MT-16. And I picked this up because it was only $20 and because it's similarly sized to some of these other tripods like the small rig mini tripod but it really doesn't compete with the others in terms of overall stability or confidence with heavier items. It's a bit taller than the Manfrotto Pixie sitting at about six and a quarter inches at its lowest setting. Its leg base is also wider than the Pixie at about nine and a half inches leg to leg, but it's not quite as wide as the small rig. The main differentiating feature of the MT-16 is that it telescopes so you can put your camera on the end and hold it out away from you for a wider field of view. Or of course you could just use the telescoping feature to get your item taller while sitting on a flat surface. However, that telescoping feature means that when the legs are set, there's a center tube that's just always and permanently there. It comes down in the middle, as you can see here. The center tube not only holds the telescopic midsection when retracted, but it also kind of helps support the tripod if the weight of the item you put on top is a bit much, the weight will get distributed between the legs, but that center column will also touch the surface and take some of the weight. It measures about six and a quarter inches when at its lowest height and goes up to 15 inches when extended. The ball head is the single adjustment style only, so with this single wing nut, you loosen it and you can move the ball head in any direction. 
but that means of course there is no pan only mode. The ball head is not removable from the MT-16, it's just fixed and part of the tripod. So if any of these components in the ball head break, you can't just replace the ball head. There is a quarter inch 20 bolt on top and has a built in threading system with this little turning knob there. So you can just mount it directly to any gear without having to spin the gear itself or spin the tripod. You just spin that little adjustment knob. The ball head does have an additional cold shoe mount on the side so you can mount other items to that cold shoe, maybe like a small microphone and the cold shoe mount does spin for additional final adjustment. The MT-16 is very lightweight, but that's because it's also very plasticky. It's pretty much mostly all plastic, even the hinge joints on the legs. I just don't see any metal on this thing other than the ball head itself and some screws here and there, but the housing that holds all of that is still all plastic. It's fine for small lightweight items like smartphones, small microphones, or something like the Sony ZV-1 where you can use that telescopic feature to get a little more reach and field of view out of your ZV-1 if you bought the ZV-1 instead of waiting for the ZV-1 Mark II, which has a wider field of view, but I digress. And I wouldn't use the MT-16 with my full frame mirrorless camera setup. It just feels like something that's going to give or break if you put heavy objects on it. If I just barely pull out on the legs, they do flex and I can feel how they would probably break relatively quickly. But with that center tube providing a little extra support, it does help the legs from flexing out too much. So be careful with what you do put on this tripod. It's also about 20 to $25, but honestly, I don't really use this very much. I don't find it very sturdy, or at least I don't find that I'm confident in its sturdiness being mostly plastic. But I do kind of like the height I can get with that telescoping feature for raising up small cameras, LED lights, or maybe even a lightweight microphone to get them close to me here at my desk. But lastly, one thing that the MT-16 has over the Manfrotto Pixie and the small rig mini tripod is its slimness when folded up. It's overall just a lot more slim and sleek when you need to store it. All right, now my second favorite tripod in this lineup is this one. Again, it's that Ulanzi MT24 or MT22, or was actually labeled Pictron MT24 when I bought it, but I'm just going to call it the MT22 since that is what it is labeled on the tripod itself. This one has been really great with the exception of one attribute that I'll get to. It's all mostly metal instead of plastic, which not only makes the joints stronger, but it also gives more weight to the tripod itself so it can support and hold larger and heavier items. The legs actually have two positions and the first position is similar in spread to both the Manfrotto Pixie and the MT-16, kind of that, you know, roughly 45 degree angle. But if you just pull back on this little tab right there, then the legs can spread out to a lower position, giving this a much lower center of gravity like the small rig mini tripod. And I like that, I like options. And you can put them back in its first position by just letting it click. That uh, little spring-loaded clip grabs the next section and we're back to position one. These legs also telescope. I love that. Telescopes right out. Now you have a much taller tripod, or if you needed to, you can put them in the second position and have a really wide, really stable tripod that sits really low to the ground. To untelescope the legs, you push these two tabs here and just squeeze that back in right there. And now we're back into first position. It's kind of like tripod ballet. First position, second position, third position, and so on. The MT-22 measures about four inches tall in its lowest position, about six and a half inches tall in its standard position, and goes all the way up to about eight and a half inches in its tallest position. The leg extension pieces here, these are plastic, but it feels like the legs themselves are metal, so little plastic tabs to operate the telescoping feature on the legs. But overall, this thing is mostly metal. There's not a lot of plastic on it. I really like that. It feels really good in the hands. You've got multiple positions. It weighs enough to where you can feel confident with heavier objects on it. And when you do have an even heavier object, like a bigger camera with a longer and heavier lens, you can put it in that wider stance, again, like the small rig mini tripod, and feel even more confident that this thing is not going to tip over and will hold the weight of your bigger cameras. Now the ball head on this tripod is not my favorite. It feels really good, but it is only that single adjustment style with a single wing nut to adjust and tilt or any direction you need to go. And it's just not my favorite way of doing things. I much prefer having a pan only function because again, when you need to adjust something on this tripod, you've got to stable your gear with one hand, 
loosen the wing nut, move it, and it just becomes a two-handed operation versus something like the small rig tripod where you can you know, use that pan only just to turn your gear around if you needed to. So not my favorite tripod head. Again, it does feel smooth and it does feel secure, so I don't have problems with its stability. Just wish it had a pan only function. And even though you can unscrew the legs, revealing a quarter 20 bolt and swap out the ball head, there are two other features about this ball head that I really like. And number one, the ball head has an additional cold shoe mount here on the side, which again, rotates just like the MT-16. So you can mount other items to this tripod in case you needed to just, you know, again, have your camera out there and mount a microphone. You've got an additional cold shoe mount to do that with. And number two, the best thing for me about this particular ball head is the Arca Swiss clamp and plate that comes with it. This is one of the smallest and most universally grabbing Arca Swiss clamps that I've come across, both in total length and in width. For the past couple of years, the smallest Arca Swiss clamp that I could find was this one. But as you can see, the uh, Arca Swiss clamp that comes on the MT-22 is much shorter from knob to end of clamp, but both of these clamps grab standard 38 millimeter Arca Swiss plates. And I just don't understand why they always put such a huge knob on these clamps. It just makes the overall clamp larger when there are options like this MT-22 out there that have this more compact Arca Swiss clamp, just making the whole tripod more compact when you do need to stow it. And along with that clamp comes a small Arca Swiss plate. When I say small, it still measures 38 millimeters in one direction, but as you can see, it's kind of a half or three quarter size. And that's great because I find that when mounting standard Arca Swiss plates like this Peak Design on something like a small video monitor, it can just make the monitor overall larger because it sticks out the front a lot of the time. With this small plate or this three quarter size plate that comes with the MT-22, if we put it on this video monitor, that's great. Now the plate doesn't stick so far out in front of the monitor. Of course, when mounting this style plate, since it is kind of mountable only in one direction, we have to mount our equipment with the Arca Swiss knob under the side instead of to the front or back. Not a big deal either way, works great and keeps your slim gear slim. But I really like the MT-22. I really wish it had a pan only function, but the small Arca Swiss clamp and the multiple leg positions make this one of my most versatile tripods that I keep in my bag most of the time. All right, so those are the tripods that you can buy as a single item that come as they come, just as you've seen in this video. However, my last and favorite tripod is this one. And this is one that you unfortunately can't buy as a single unit. I had to find and piece together the legs, the ball head, and the Arca Swiss clamp to basically make what I feel is my most versatile tripod. And this is the tripod that I have about four or five of this exact same kit. And it consists of these low profile legs from ZDO, a tiny ball head with a pan only function, as well as of course, a fully articulating function. The ball head also has a standard quarter 20 on top, but if you unscrew the top, you can flip it around. And now instead of a quarter 20 mount, you have a cold shoe mount on top. So you have a couple of options with this tripod. I usually leave it in the uh, standard quarter 20 mount right there. And I keep an Arca Swiss clamp on top. As of right now, it's this one, which I'll link to. It's kind of a no name brand clamp. Uh, at the time, it was one of the smallest and most affordable ones that I could find at around 12 to $15 per clamp. So when we put this all together, we have you know, a low profile tripod, the legs don't spread too far. So that does limit its stability, but the legs are mostly metal. So that gives it some more weight. So even though the legs don't spread wide, being a little heavier, I, I still trust this with my mirrorless camera, as long as you have one of the legs out over the front so it doesn't tip over. And the leg span is just under that of the Manfrotto Pixie at about seven inches leg to leg. And again, the ball head is fully articulating in any direction and it has a separate pan lock knob. So you can just pan the tripod or whatever is on top of the tripod without loosening the ball head and having your equipment fall over. So you don't have to, again, you don't have to grab your gear and hold it steady, loosen that pan knob, spin it around, do whatever you need to on the back of your gear. 
spin it back around, lock it down. So this one for me has been my favorite. I'll probably make a separate video about this tripod, but since it is the one that I have the most copies of, I have one right there holding my audio recorder, one in my hand. I know I've got one in my bag, and I think I have another one in my car. So I've got four or five of this exact setup, and it's great. It means I don't always have to dig it out of my bag. Just to use it, I've got them everywhere. The legs cost about $15 to $18. The ball head was about $17, and the Arca Swiss clamp is about $15, making this tripod about $50 total, which is about the same price as a small rig mini tripod, but I get a more compact tripod with you know not as much leg span as something like the small rig mini. But again, for me, more compact, more versatile overall, can fit into tighter spaces, and uh, Bob might be your uncle. So that's it. This is most of the mini tripods that I do own with that custom one being the one that I always end up going back to and that I have multiple copies of. The Pixie is great for lightweight items and quick deployment. The small rig is great for a lower center of gravity and more stability and can handle heavier items. The Ulanzi MT-16 is good for smaller cameras like the Sony ZV-1 or your smartphone and for getting those small items further away or taller with its telescoping features. The Ulanzi MT-22 or MT-24 Great for medium weight items like small video monitors, some cameras, and has a lot of versatility with its multiple leg positions, but doesn't have a pan only function. And my custom one is a good mix of all of these things, small, but has some weight to it to handle heavier items and a pan only function on the ball head. And of course, I'll link to all of these items in the description with some affiliate links. And using those links and hitting those like and subscribe buttons really helps the growth of my channel and helps me continue to bring content like this to you. So with that, I'll say adieu. I'll see you later. Bye. We're still recording 51 minutes. 51 minutes. Wow. Differentiating is a hard word.